So welcome to the Privacy Camp 2017. Thanks to Edwin for organizing it. It's great to be here. And we want to talk. I have to, to talk louder. Yeah. Uh, okay. We want to present this book. It's called Heat, and it's called the Handbook on the Evaluation of Anti-Terrorism Legislation. So why did we did it? Uh, since 9/11, in the last 15 years, we've seen uh, a lot. Uh, in surveillance measure, uh, the improvement of uh, surveillance uh, technologies and the expansions, uh, expansion of, of, uh, in, uh, of uh, surveillance powers, actually. And we just don't want to think behind and go uh, do litigation and go to the courts to, uh, to uh, bring lawsuits uh, to fight those measures, those laws in Austria. Uh, we wanted to uh, choose another approach. So we provided uh, this book. And it's basically uh, uh, an evaluation of all the surveillance, me surveillance measures and laws in Austria, the technology used by uh, uh, law enforcement authorities, and uh, a first rough uh, technology uh, impact assessment. And uh, we just, uh, who, who, is, who is addressed uh, with this book with heat? Uh, it's, uh, of course, lawmakers, it's the legal community, it's journalists, it's, it's activists, and, uh, of course, it's uh, the civil society as a whole. And it's uh, driven by the idea of the Überwachungsgesamtrechnung. Uh, this term in German, in English, it would be translated as uh, comprehensive surveillance footprint, footprint evaluation. Uh, it was first mentioned by the German Constitutional Court in Karlsruhe in 2010 in the case of the uh, national implementation of the data re uh, retention uh, directive and the court basically says uh, if you uh, assess surveillance measures and especially the proportionabil proportionability uh, you have to take all uh, given measures, surveillance measures into account and that may uh, uh, narrow the leeway uh, of, the, of the lawmaker. So this is the idea behind uh, HEAT. Uh, who did it? Uh, Epicenter Works, formerly AK Vorrat Austria, the working uh, group on data retention Austria, um, which is uh, quite known uh, from the case Digital Rights Ireland. Uh, we brought the, the national implementation of the data retention directive to the Austrian uh, Constitutional Court, which uh, led to the, uh, to the uh, uh, ECJ case in Luxembourg and uh, the other partner was the Research Institute in Vienna. It's the Center for Digital <coughs> Human Rights and VSES. Uh, it's the Vienna Center for Societal Security. And uh, I just uh, want to give over to Christoph, our chairman, and he talks uh, about the methods and the criteria and the interdisciplinary approach uh, we chose. Yeah, thank you very much, <coughs> Alex. Thank you for the floor uh, to, to save some time. Um, what we saw very clearly already in the work of uh, elaborating the complaint against data retention, that of course this is a topic with a lot of impacts uh, on, on all the levels. That means uh, particularly, of course, level of technology, level of law, but also, of course, level of uh, uh, social science, uh, uh, of, of societal science particularly. And what we saw there is we have to find somehow or provide the kind of a red line through a very complex uh, mixture of different laws. So, uh, because it is not obvious what has uh, uh, a criminal proceeding code to do with Telecommunications Act and with uh, E-Commerce Act, for example. Yeah? And our approach is firstly, on a legal um, uh, on a legal level to see all the norms that are in core first of all providing for this kind of surveillance but with connection to other laws so, uh, particularly in the field where private companies are determined uh, and then by public law data is grabbed from private from private companies um, that was one part that uh, um, uh, shall particularly show in the book also um, uh, interconnections. Uh, what, for example, has to do um, uh, the, the wording in the criminal code 
uh, according to the membership of a terrorist organizations, what has this to do with the possibility to access IP addresses? And what we try there is to uh, um, uh, somehow reduce the clouds there to give more light, to give more, and then combine it with the other disciplines. So we list all the technologies uh, that are actually available and we distinct their technologies that are already foreseen by law, technologies that are in place but not foreseen by law. Uh, but as far as we know, they are maybe already used, at least existing on the market, like uh, open source intelligence tools, for example. Uh, and uh, also these cases where we see that technology is provided for by law, but just for a part, like an IMSI catcher, for example, where the law says yes for localizing, but the technology is able to make really a tracking of the content, uh, a, a, a lawful inter uh, or not lawful, but an interception of content. Uh, even though the law does not provide for it. So we tried to figure out, we worked with uh, also uh, parliamentary uh, requests with, uh, with members of the parliament in Austria, uh, with whom we were more close. Um, and in the end, the output of all this uh, also combined with the societal uh, questions behind it and already a lot of research that has been done there in the last years to bring out two things. One thing is a set of criteria Whereas not everything is completely new, basically it is following uh, the systematic of the European Court of Human Rights to the proportionality principle, like criteria, is there is a legal base? That means how determined is the legal base? Does it provide for everything the technology allows? Uh, is the measure at all feasible to suit the uh, uh, purpose that uh, uh, has at least claimed to be the purpose for the measure? Uh, is it then, if it's suitable, is it really the lowest interference possible or would it, possible, would it be possible to have another instrument to reach the same purpose? Uh, and then, of course, in the end, uh, what about the cost of it? What about the balancing? That means the proportionality in the narrow sense. We bring this cuttle of criteria, this is now just the top of the iceberg, we go by anal analyzing um, uh, jurisprudence, uh, particularly as, as much as possible on European level, uh, to bring criteria out, but not in the very typical lawyer's way, where we have like kilometers of paper just full written, but we do a more intuitive approach. That means we work with mind maps. We work with mind maps where we can bring references and everything. We can, uh, you don't need to be a lawyer anymore to be able to read these things. Uh, we have the second big part on, on the side of that uh, uh, set of criteria. We have an action catalog, an action catalog that is a recommendation, of course, basically for public administration, for the government, but addressing also others where we say where to put priority with, with method methodology to think it really as we know it in the, um, uh, for example, in the topic of information security, to follow a dynamic thinking of a plan, do, check, act cycle. Not anymore let the legislator uh, who really write the law text being the ones who have to assess uh, all these questions, which has to be in a proper risk assessment there. And these things together are provided in a way that they are understandable, that they can address civil society, but also policymakers, lawmakers, uh, public security officials, and so on. Uh, and the plan is in the in the next step, when you see, for example, this kind of mind maps, these tools are meant to be in the next step online also. That means to have an online version. We want to uh, uh, provide soon, in the course of this year, ambitious goal is in the middle of 2070 really a book, a printed version that is published uh, uh, from a publishing house, but also with an online version that provides for a bit more interactivity uh, because the potential is big, especially for participation of civil society, that we can provide for easier possibilities in a complex in, uh, environment to point the arguments directly there. And this is the approach for what we want to further develop it. And particularly, therefore, of course, we want to leave just the borders of Austria. It is mainly made for the situation of Austria, but a lot of topics, what we see, a lot of topics are European topics. They are not just there. So our next step is now really to bring it on the European level. So we highly appreciate today this chance uh, to introduce it here. Uh, we're going to try uh, uh, all contacts, all cooperations uh, that we can uh, uh, make awareness of this approach because we did a lot of work that is part of such an evaluation. We already did 
uh, as a hand reaching from civil society. We are not just against it. We are providing uh, uh, real work for that and we want to find together uh, uh, solutions there. So um, I, uh, I might use the opportunity to uh, motivate you uh, to, to spread the word about it, whoever might be interesting, uh, interested or even uh, uh, yourself. You have our contacts. We highly appreciate any kind of cooperation there on European level. Thank you very much. Yeah. Just a short follow up. Uh, if you're interested in German speaking, uh, the book, the handbook, is uh, a PDF under a Creative Commons license uh, available on our website. And of course, we're working it to translate it, it into English. And we provided uh, a short info sheet uh, in English for you, and we brought it with you. Thank you very much.